21st Precinct, Sergeant Waters. Now, wait a minute, just a second. Where is it? Where? Yeah. Yeah. Now, what apartment number? Now, what's the trouble there? You what? You are in the muster room at the 21st Precinct, the nerve center. A call is coming through. You will follow the action taken pursuant to that call from this minute until the final report is written in the 124 room at the 21st Precinct. All right. You just stay right there. I'll send the officers right over. Yeah. Right away. All right. 21st Precinct. It's just lines on a map of the city of New York. Most of the 173,000 people wedged into the nine-tenths of a square mile between Fifth Avenue and the East River wouldn't know if you asked them that they lived or worked in the 21st. Whether they know it or not, the security of their homes, their persons, and their property is the job of the men of the 21st Precinct. The 21st, 160 patrolmen, 11 sergeants, and four lieutenants of whom I'm the boss. My name is Kennelly, Frank Kennelly. I'm captain in command of the 21st. It was Saturday, and I had been off the job since 8 a.m. I arrived home a little after 9 and found Ellen in the kitchen having breakfast. I sat down at the table, had a cup of coffee with her, and at ten minutes to ten, Ellen left to go shopping, and I went into the bedroom and got undressed. I read the morning papers for a few minutes, finally put them aside, and fell asleep. It must have been several hours later that I heard a bell ringing in the distance. It was the telephone. Now... Lieutenant, what do we got? the car sent by the desk officer, Lieutenant Snyder, was in front of the house. I went outside, got in, and we drove to Manhattan across the Triborough Bridge, down the Franklin D. Roosevelt Drive along the East River, and finally to the scene of the homicide at 608 East 67th Street, a modern and fairly well-kept apartment house. On the street in front of the building were parked two sector cars of the 21st, the sergeant's car, the detective squad car, the morgue wagon, and what I presume to be two or three other departmental vehicles. I got out of my car and instructed the operator, Patrolman Farrell, to ring into the desk officer for further instructions. Then I crossed the sidewalk, walked past a small crowd of curious citizens who had gathered, and through the door to the building where Patrolman Vaccaro, who had been posted there, saluted me. Inside, I headed directly for the self-service elevator. Finished up there, Sergeant? Well, he is, Captain. All right, go on. You're okay now. The medical examiner's been here and gone. What about the wife? So you, Captain. She's still alive. Uh, hang it out there. I'm going upstairs with the Captain. Okay, Captain. All right. Well, go ahead, Captain. All right. How bad is she? I can't figure how she's still alive, Captain. One on the head and one on the chest. Mm-hmm. And it was, and a pop comes. He used a 38 automatic he keeps in the store. Who's up there now? Lieutenant King and his detectives and some men from the homicide squad. Just about getting finished up. Where's Brider? He's still upstairs. Lieutenant King is talking to him. Did he say why he did it? Yes, sir. Said he was tired of her running around with other men. He wanted to put a stop to it. And permanently, hmm? Yes, sir. I guess that's what he had in mind. Over. To the right there, Captain. you, man. What are you here for? Get those people out of the hall. Go ahead, Captain.
this is where the man's body was. Right here. Uh-huh. In the coffee table and the couch. One shot got him. Right between the eyes. Here. Yeah. The wife was over here. Tried her, apparently. Went after the man first. Wife tried to get away. He caught up with her right here. Looks like she was dodging him around the dining room table. He fired at her from this side of it. She fell down over there against the sideboard. Mm-hmm. Any children, Sergeant? Yes, sir. There's a girl about 17. Where is she? We don't know. We think she's out with some friends this afternoon. What's the dead man's name? Got an identification on him yet? Yes, sir. According to the cards in his pocket, he was Harold Shipstead. 864 Crowell Avenue in the Bronx. 43 years old. I see. Where's Lieutenant King? Uh, where's Lieutenant King? He's in the kitchen. All right, come on. Well, I got a permit, Mr. Lieutenant. I got a permit to keep it in the store. Doesn't give you a license to kill people with it. Hello, Captain. Ma'am? Captain? Woods? I know it doesn't. I just wanted you to know I've got a permit to have the gun in the store. We got stuck up once a couple of years ago and I applied. Hello, Captain. Mr. Brighter? I'm sorry I caused you so much trouble. I went out of my head, I guess. You know how you can get. Something bothers you on your mind. I just wasn't going to let her get away with it anymore, that's all. She's been doing this to me for 15 years. I had enough of it. I couldn't take it anymore. Did you know how she's dead? Sure, I know. She's been running around with him for two or three years. I told her. I told her if I ever caught them together, she'd know what to expect. How'd you know I was here? Don't worry about that. I got friends in this building. One of my friends called me. Who was that? Never mind. Was it a neighbor, somebody on this floor? Never mind who it was. You got your gun and came home. Yeah. I told her what would happen. I warned her plenty of times. What did you see when you opened the door? I saw them. What were they doing? Sitting there, having a drink. You saw the glasses. Him coming over here in the middle of the day and drinking with her while I'm slaving away in the store trying to make a buck. That's what burned me up more than anything. I hate to be made a sucker, huh? That's what they were doing to me. They were playing me for a chump. For years, she'd been playing me for a chump. Well, I'll tell you something. I just wasn't going to take it anymore. So, to uh, uh, Listen, uh, uh, do you mind if I get a drink of water? I won't try nothing, I promise you. Go ahead. Sergeant, you better get some of these men back on patrol. Okay, Captain. Right away. All right. All right, sir. The uh, glasses are in the cabin. Go ahead. Anybody else? No. Uh, how is she? Do you know my wife? We haven't heard yet. You'll keep me informed, won't you? I, I want to be kept informed. We'll keep you informed, yeah. That's good. You sure nobody else? You're perfectly welcome, you know. Uh, I've got nothing against you, fellas. We're just not thirsty. Are you detective? Are you sure? Positive. Captain will tell you. I'm a great friend of the cops. Every year, I give a little radio from the store as a prize for the kids' Christmas party. Isn't that right, Captain? Every year, without fail. Yes, that's right. Sit down, Mr. Brighter. Uh, listen, I, I, I think there's some cold beer in the icebox. Would anybody like a can of cold beer? Sit down. All right, I was just wondering if somebody did. You know, the whole thing is just catching up with me. I'm beginning to get a little bit shaky. Look at that. I'm nervous all over. I'm never like that. I'm steady as an arrow, usually. I'd like to get out of here. That's what's doing it, hanging around here. We'll be going to the station house as soon as the detectives get finished up in here. We're waiting for somebody from the district attorney's office to come. What do you need somebody from the district attorney's office for? The way we handle things. Oh. Oh. Excuse me, man. Yeah, sure, Captain. You, uh, you have a daughter, don't you, Mr. Brighter? Yeah, we do. What's her name? Janie. Jane. Mm -hmm. How old is she? She'll be 17. You know, I forgot all about her. What you going to say? You think she'll blame me? I mean, she ought to understand my position. Where is she? You know? I don't know. In school, I guess. Today is Saturday. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Well, sometimes she goes down at Times Square on Saturday afternoon with some friends. They go to a movie together, you know, a bunch of girls. Well, what time would you expect her home? I don't know. And she'd come home before supper, usually. Listen, let's go to the station house now. I, I I don't want to be here when she comes. You have any relatives we can notify to come take care of her? Me? No. I got nobody. Mm. Does your wife? Well, she's got a sister in Syracuse, but... 
I don't see what you have to tell her for. Well, somebody's got to take care of the girl. Well, what's the matter with me? I can take care of her. You'll be kind of busy, Mr. Brighter. Even when the perpetrator is arrested immediately, a homicide investigation is conducted in a detailed and exacting manner as described in the manual of procedure. After the victim has been pronounced dead by an ambulance surgeon, the medical examiner of the city of New York is notified. In the meantime, detectives of the precinct squad and the homicide squad of the borough are on the job. A photographer takes pictures of the body and of the scene from every possible angle. The ranking superior officer of the detective division present dictates a complete description of the scene to a homicide squad stenographer. In cases such as the one at hand, where a victim is critically wounded, detectives have an additional arduous task to perform. At 3.20 p.m., Lieutenant Matt King, commander of the 21st Detective Squad, and Detective Ellis P. Wood drove downtown to Bellevue Hospital, went to the emergency section in Building I, and walked down the corridor with the resident surgeon in attendance. Strangely enough, Lieutenant, it's not a head wound we're so concerned about at the moment. Oh, no? No, sir. The penetrating wound of the chest has caused a hemothorax. It's a collection of blood in the pleural cavity. Yeah, I know. Well, that's it, gentlemen, down there. That's where we've got him. Uh, just a second, Doctor. Before we go in... Yes. Do you think it's pretty hopeless? Yes, I'd say so. If she lives for the day, I'd be surprised. Now, you can appreciate that these dying declarations are rather difficult to handle. Oh, yes. But as I said, she told me herself she knew she was going to die. You sure of it? Hmm. All right. This detective is going to take everything down in writing. I hope you'll be able to understand what she says. She has a drain up to her nose, you know. Yeah, we'll manage. All right, Woody. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Nothing. We were just 
Paris, that's for all good things. How did he happen to be at your house today? He called on the telephone. He said he wanted to see me. What about? About a present for his wife, an anniversary present. You were friendly with his wife as well as him? Very friendly. He's my best friend. My best friend in the world. What did you do when he got there? He sat in the living room. We were having a beer, talking. You know, just talking. Were you and Harold Ships dead together when your husband came home? We were in the living room. What happened when your husband came home? He started shooting. Shot at Harold and he shot at me. Did he say anything? My husband? Yes. No. He was just shooting, that's all. Had there ever been trouble between you and your husband before? Trouble. We had trouble all the time. Jealous, jealous over nothing. Man couldn't look at me and he'd start a fight. Has he ever threatened to do anything like this before? Threatened? He'd go wild. I asked the super to come up and fix the pipe under the sink. He beat me up. Right in front of Jamie, beat me up. That's your daughter, Jane. Where is she? Why hasn't Jamie been here? Aren't you going to let me see her? Yes, Mrs. Ryder. As soon as we locate her. All right, Lieutenant. Yes, sir. I think that ought to be all for now. Right. Don't leave me, please. I, I don't want to be alone. I don't want to be alone. I'll send the nurse in, Mrs. Granny. Please, please send someone in. I don't want to be alone. She'll be right in. Okay, Woody. Yes, sir. Don't forget. I won't. Okay. Got a rough job, Lieutenant. Part of it isn't pleasant. Shall I get that written up and bring it back down here, Lieutenant? Maybe we can get a signature. Yeah, you can try. Well, isn't a signature necessary? Not on a dying declaration, as long as there are witnesses. No, it's really important. You've got your man. Well, the district attorney thinks it's important. If he wants to make a case of first-degree murder. Lieutenant, I think this must be the daughter coming with Sergeant Waters. No, I am. Hello, Lieutenant. Hi. What are you, Sergeant? This is uh, James Ryder. Where's my mother? I want to see my mother. This is the doctor who's taking care of her, Janie. Oh, is she? Is she all right? I'm not going to lie to you, miss. She's pretty bad. Oh, my God. Dear God. Would you like to go in and see her? Yes, can I? I I mean, is it all right? It'll be all right. Just a second. Yes. You know how this happened, Janie. Yes, I know. It was my father. What are you going to do to him? I'm not going to do anything to him. That's up to the courts. I wish it was up to me. I just wish it was up to me. Lieutenant King returned to the station house to continue the investigation. In the meantime, I had also gone there in the company of the police commissioner and the chief inspector of the department who had come to the scene of the homicide for a first-hand report on the crime. At the station house, I went upstairs with them to the 21st Detective Squad, where they sat in on the questioning of the confessed killer, Louis Brider, by an assistant district attorney. During the course of the questioning, we received word from Bellevue that Mrs. Brider had died. Died while her daughter was in the room. When the high brass were ready to leave the station house, I came downstairs to the muster room with them. They signed the blotter and left the precinct. After they had gone, I went into my office to glance at some of the reports on my desk before I, too, went home. Yes, come in. Can I see you a minute, Captain? Yes, come in, Sergeant. Yes, sir. I've got that reinvestigation report on that LD-80 you asked me to check out. Yeah. 
said you wanted it as soon as possible. I can have the clerical man type it up right away if you want to send it down to the license division this afternoon. No, that's all right, Sergeant. I won't be able to put an endorsement on it until tomorrow anyway. Yes, sir. Well, it was a pretty sad case over there this afternoon. An homicide. Yeah. She died, you know. Yeah, so I hear. Well. Oh, uh, just a second, Sergeant. I... Yes, sir. Excuse me. 21st Precinct, Captain Canale. Lieutenant King, Captain. Yes, Matt. Captain Woody just came in with that brighter girl. He rang upstairs from the muster room. Yeah? We were just about starting downstairs with her father to book him. Can she wait in your office for a few minutes? I don't think they ought to run into each other just yet. All right, Matt, sure. Are there uh, any provisions being made to take care of her? Yes, there's some friends of the family are coming here for her. But the assistant DA wants to take her statement first. All right, Matt, she can sit in here. I'm leaving anyway. Yes, sir. Yes, sir? Uh, how many more of those LD-80s have you got to investigate, Sergeant? Just one more, Captain. Besides the one I completed today. All right. Let's get them in. Yes, sir. I'll finish up on the other one tomorrow. Yes, come in. Lieutenant King said it would be all right to wait in here, Captain. Yes, that's all right, Woody. Come on in. Come on, Jenny. All right, I'm coming. This is Captain Canelli. Hello, Jenny. Why don't you sit right down there? Yes. No. I'll see you tomorrow, Captain. Oh, uh, shut the door, will you, Sergeant? Yes, sir. Well, you can sit down, Jenny. Thank you. All right. I'm sorry. Will you tell me something? Well, I'll try. Why can't I cry? I want to cry. I can't cry. You will. Give yourself a chance. I should. I know it. But I can't. I tried it at the hospital, and I tried it in the car. And I couldn't, could I? No, you couldn't. Where is he? Where's my father? I don't know. I don't know where he is. Is he here, Captain? I was... No use lying to you, Janie. He's here. He's upstairs. I want to see him. I've got to see him. You'll see him later. I want to tell him what a mistake he made. I want to tell him how good she was to me and to him and to everybody. It's the only thing that was wrong with her. She was too good. I want to tell him what a mistake he made. Well, I think he knows that. I want to see him. Now, Janie, things are bad enough. Don't make them worse. It couldn't be any worse. I don't know what I'm going to do. I just don't know. Look, there's no use in my telling you that everything will work out all right. We both know that everything is pretty bad, but a lot of people are going to try and help you. Take my advice, Janie. Let them. I want to talk to him. I want to tell him what he's done. Now, Janie. What he's done to me and to her and to everybody. I want to tell him I feel like killing him. That's how I feel like killing him. You don't <laughs> feel that way. I know how I feel. You can't tell me how I feel. <laughs> Nobody knows it all. <laughs> well, right now, I think you feel a little bit better. I'll see you, Woody. Yes, sir. You take care of her. Yes, sir. 21st Precinct, Sergeant Waters. That's B-R-I-B-E-R. No middle name. Isn't that right, Mr. Bryan? They'd be out alive for you, Lieutenant Snyder. No middle name. Just a second, Matt. Yeah. Hello, Captain. Matt? Go ahead, Lieutenant. 21st Precinct, Lieutenant Snyder. Captain, as many times as you've been in my store, and as many times as I've been here. Hold on, CBR. I never thought anything like this would happen to me. Never. Well, I don't think any of us did. I shouldn't have done it, I admit. I know I shouldn't have done it. But things pile up inside of you. They pile up so you've, you've got to do something. Give me a minute, man. Okay. You don't move around, Mr. Brighter. I have to stand right there. I'm sorry. Jamie! Jamie, come back here! I want to see him! Jamie, you were supposed to keep her in there, Woods. You ran up, Captain. I'm sorry. Jenny. 
I know what I did to you. I'm sorry. Please don't hate me. I want to. No, I should. But I don't think I can. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you. I don't know why you're so kind to me. I don't deserve it. Well, Mr. Brighter, a lot of people get what they don't deserve. Twenty-first precinct, Sergeant Waters. Yeah, that's right. A verification of ownership is what we want. Connecticut registration three T one five two. And what do you have to do? Tell a type to Hartford or someplace? Or what's the delay? We've got and so it goes. Around the clock, through the week, every day, every year. A police precinct in the city of New York is a flesh and blood merry go round. Anyone can catch the brass ring. Or the brass ring can catch anyone. 21st Precinct, a factual account of the way the police work in the world's largest city, is presented with the official cooperation of the Patrolman's Benevolent Association, an organization of more than 20,000 members of the police department, City of New York. Everett Sloan in the role of Captain Kennelly, Ken Lynch as Lieutenant King, Harold Stone as Sergeant Waters. Featured in tonight's cast were Elspeth Eric, Lola Pizer, Bill Lipton, Santos Ortega, and P.J. Sidney. Written and directed by Stanley Niss, Art Hanna speaking. <laughs>